As stated before, one of the things that really separates Cakewalk by BandLab from other DAWs on the market is the fact that nearly everything is customizable. So in Module 4, let's talk about setting up and customizing Cakewalk by BandLab to meet your needs. When you first open up Cakewalk by BandLab, you're presented with a start screen that looks similar to the one that's found on your screen now. What you're looking at is a set list of templates. These templates have either been pre-installed or, as in this case, there are actually some on the screen that have been created by yours truly. These are what is called project templates. Contained within these templates is a predefined setup of various panes, windows, and views. The great thing about setting up a project in this way is that you can actually include the plugins that you would normally use on a project from the get-go. You can even include the amount of tracks that you would like to start out with, as well as any further customization to the colorization of those tracks and or the routing of those tracks. You'll notice that these are called .cwt files, which in Cakewalk by BandLab is translated to Cakewalk templates. Let's begin with the template empty project that you see before you on the screen, and let's customize it, and then I'll show you how to save that template into something that you can pull up every single time. Okay, so now that I've opened up the project empty template, you can see that all of the windows, the panes, the various views are arranged in such a way. However, this can all be changed and saved accordingly. Let's begin by adding some tracks to this template. Okay. Now let's say I'd like to name these tracks. So in this example, you can see I've inserted four tracks. I've named them accordingly. But now let's say I wanna take this even a step farther and I would like to have these tracks color coded. On the left side of each of the tracks contained within the track view, there is a small rectangular that is vertical found here. By hovering over it, you can see that it already says track collar. I'll click on that now. As you can see, there's already an entire palette of collars here to choose from, and I can also set it to follow the bus or as a default. Or if I'd like to even further customize it, I can go into other and pick my own collar. Now let's further customize this by rearranging how the windows will look when it's officially opened. So I'm going to collapse this window and I'm going to remove the help module. Now I'm going to collapse the inspector pane and that will leave me with something that looks similar to this. All right, let's say that on my vocals, I always use the VX64 vocal strip. I'll simply insert an instance of that. Likewise, on my guitar, maybe I always use a slight amount of compression. I'll simply insert that here. And on the bass, maybe I always use a multiband. Now, the great thing about this is, if there are pre-programmed settings, say uh, certain ratios or release times that I specifically will always use as a good starting point, I can simply input those here now and they will save when the template is saved as well. Okay, I'm also going to collapse the arranger track and I'm going to bring up the console view just here at the bottom. Let's say I don't want to arm the metronome either for recording. I'll go ahead and turn that off as well. Okay, so now having everything arranged the way that I'd like, having my plugins and color coding all lined up the way that I would like as well, I'm gonna go ahead and start routing these to different buses. So first I'll insert a reverb bus in this instance. Then I'll insert a send to the reverb bus on track one. 
you could see how in depth we could go with this and just how customizable we could get this for our specific needs. However, I'm going to stop at this point and I'm going to show you how to save this as a template so it will be instantly accessible every time you click on that CWT file. So first we'll need to go to File, Save As, and within this dialog menu, we're going to drop down to Save As Type, Template. In the Go To Folder section, instead of saving this in Project Files, we're going to save this in Template Files. Now you can see that all of the project templates that I originally had on my start screen are showing up here. So let's call this one test. And I'll click save. Okay, now starting back at the start screen, we're going to scroll down through the project's template list until we find the one that we just created, which is here. As you can see, all of the changes that were made on the template before we saved it are now accessible whenever we open this. This can be used to speed up your workflow and to save you a ton of time. Contained within this tutorial course is also a template that I've created called the Pro Startup Template, as you can see here. So here's the example of the template that I personally use called the Pro Startup Template. As you can see, I have all of my tracks color coded, named correctly, and I even have my drum track, my Soft Synth Addictive Drums 2, routed out to where each of the kit pieces is routed to their own individual track. When opening up the console view, you can also see that there are track icons as well as sins already in place. And on the buses pane, you can see that I already have all of the reverb buses, delay, saturation, and even the drums and parallel compression for the drums. Now, it is important to note that if you create a template with pre-saved plugins on those tracks, that if you were to share that template file with someone else, if they were to load it on their version of Cakewalk by BandLab, they would have to have the exact instances or the same plugins that you have on your template for those plugins to show up. Now, this does not mean that the template will not work at all. In fact, most all of the changes will show up on their end. And the only thing that would be missing is the plugin instances that they don't have. Let's talk about some further customization options that's found within Cakewalk by BandLab. If you find that there are a certain set of screens that you use for editing versus ones that you might use for tracking, you can actually set those up as templates within your template as well by using the workspace feature, which is found up here. This feature was formerly called lenses in older versions of Cakewalk by BandLab. You can click this drop down menu here and you can set the arrangement of each one of these workspaces. For instance, if I was to click on Arranger, you're going to see now that there are a different set of windows that are opened up and viewable. Likewise, the control bar at the top is more expanded and there are certain aspects of it that are more visible than they were before. Now I'm going to go to the basic workspace. Yet again, everything is completely changed from where it was before. This can be greatly beneficial if you're working on a project from start to finish and you would like to differentiate between the various processes that go along with the creative process itself, such as tracking, editing, mixing, mastering. You can then create a differentiated workspace based off of where you are in that project and what process that you're currently on. Once you have your workspace laid out the way that you would like it for the particular process that you're involved in, you can simply go back up to the drop down menu and go to new workspace. From here, you can name it something that is applicable to whatever you're doing. Now, if you have made some minor changes or you've tweaked the current workspace that you like to work on already, you can simply go to save workspace. This will just overwrite the previously saved workspace with the same name. By going to manage workspaces, you can see that the workspace manager dialog box is opened. This allows you to see a bird's eye view and gives you a description of what exactly is shown in each one of these workspaces. You can make any applicable changes that you would like to make here and simply hit apply to make those changes permanent.
And lastly, by using the option Apply Workspace on Project Load, you'll be giving instructions to Cakewalk by BandLab that every time it opens to apply whatever workspace has a check mark next to it at the project's load time. All right, now let's talk about some more customization options that can be found within the Tracks pane. By clicking on the View tab in the upper left-hand corner, you'll see that there are many options that are presented before me. The one that we're going to be focusing on now is the Display option. The display option allows you to further customize the way Cakewalk by BandLab looks aesthetically. As you can see, there are many different options here that can be either checked or unchecked, such as display track separators, display clip names, display clip contents, or even maximize waveform height. One setting that might be found extra useful for beat makers is the view grid lines in front of clips, as seen here. This allows a ghosted version of the waveform to be just behind the grid lines so that you can see whether or not things are lined up with the grid. This can also make it very easy when working with loop-based projects. For now, I'm gonna set mine back to behind clips. Next, we're gonna to go to the options menu. From here, we can see that we can also customize the way that things react within Cakewalk by BandLab. For instance, select track envelopes with the clips, select events with sections. And we have the option as well to, whenever we press stop, rewind to the now marker. From here, we can also set up our default crossfade type, our default fade in curves, fade out curves, or crossfades. As previously stated, the default crossfade curve can also be adjusted here. And auto crossfade on or crossfade off can likewise be set from here as well. By clicking on the MIDI tab, we also see that there are customizable options for the way that MIDI is presented in Cakewalk by BandLab as well. For instance, we can have it to show us the notes, the velocity, or show velocity on selected notes. You may have noticed earlier while we were talking about the workspaces feature that there's a small set of arrows right here. By clicking the small set of arrows, you can make Cakewalk go full screen, which removes the windowed look. Next, if we go to the Views menu, which is found here, we can go down to Icons, and from here, we can customize the way that icons appear within Cakewalk by BandLab. Likewise, by going to Edit and Preferences, we can scroll down to Customization. From here, we have several options that's available to us as well. The Display Customization gives us a wide variety of display configurations. From here, we can also set our themes. Within the customization menu, you'll also find that the keyboard shortcuts option is here as well. This is because keyboard shortcuts within Cakewalk by BandLab can be bound to the keys on your keyboard however you'd like them to be. You'll notice that the R in this instance has RSVD next to it, meaning that it is reserved. That's because the R in Cakewalk by BandLab is a shortcut key for recording. If the letter or the key is bold, it means that it's already assigned to a specific function. However, that function can be changed unless it is reserved, of course. By selecting the A button here, you can see that it's assigned to show or hide the arranger track. And the B is to open or close the browser view. So on and so forth. If a letter is not bold, for instance, the O letter is not bold, that means that it currently has no key binding and is unassigned. So let's say that maybe the O button I wanted to use to open a file. I could simply click on the O here, click File Open here, and bind the two here. Now you'll see that anytime I hit the O button, it will open an existing document. These key bindings can be saved and or rearranged in whatever way makes complete sense to you so that you can further customize even the way that your keyboard shortcuts will work within Cakewalk by BandLab. So if you're moving from one DAW to Cakewalk by BandLab and there are a set number of key bindings for that particular DAW, you can essentially set up Cakewalk by BandLab to use the same keyboard shortcuts within this program.
As previously stated, there are different themes that you can use in Cakewalk by BandLab as well. Mercury and Tungsten are the default themes that are available within Cakewalk by BandLab upon first installation. The Mercury theme is something similar to what maybe a Pro Tools session might look like. Whereas Tungsten is a little bit more modern to the Cakewalk by BandLab standards. As you can see, I've created my own theme with my website here. And another theme that allows me to have my name here and for the playback cursor here to look like a YouTube play button, as well as like, share, and subscribe just underneath that. This really takes the customization of Cakewalk by BandLab to the next level. By selecting edit at any time from this menu, I can then open up the Cakewalk theme editor. In order to use the Cakewalk theme editor, you first have to have some sort of an image editor program. Cakewalk automatically represents getpaint.net and actually has a link to it here. By clicking on the getpaint.net, you're taking to the paint.net website where you can then click here to download the program for free. Now, within this menu that's first presented during the setup wizard for Cakewalk theme editor, I'm going to hit browse and I'm going to find the paint.net that I just downloaded. In my case, it was located within the C drive under program files and paint.net. Now I'm going to find the paint.net application, make sure that it's the executable file and click open from there. Now I'll simply hit next. And the cakewalk theme editor is finished and ready to use. Okay, so upon opening up the Cakewalk theme editor, you'll notice that you're presented with a lot of options, and at first it can seem really overwhelming. However, with a little bit of navigation and taking a little bit of time to go through this, it's really not as hard as what it looks. If you'd like to change, for instance, something on your control bar, you simply find the control bar folder here. You'll see that all of the options that are found on the control bar are also found within here. If you'd like to make changes to any of these things that's found on the control bar, you can make them by clicking on these, which will then open up the paint.net file like this. And you can simply make your changes with paint.net here. All right, so as you can see with just a little bit of work, I've created a new performance module that actually says subscribe instead of performance here. From here, I'll simply go to save and hit okay. Now by refreshing it, you'll see that it shows up here. So now on a computer that has 32 cores, the performance module will say subscribe instead of performance. And now to make those changes permanent, I can simply go to save as and save this as a new template. In this case, I've called it subscribe. So when I go back to Cakewalk and I open up the templates menu, I'll now have the subscribe template available for implementation. All right, so yet again, keep in mind that everything is customizable within Cakewalk by BandLab. Everything from the way that your tracks are laid out to the way that your project loads up, even to the very color scheme of each and everything within your project. So with that being said, if you came from Pro Tools to Cakewalk by BandLab, you can literally mirror the interface of Cakewalk by BandLab to look just like Pro Tools or Logic or Reaper or whatever DAW you might be migrating from. In fact, you can go completely off the beaten path and create a color scheme or a template that is completely unique just to you.